we have to understand that where there is no crucifixion, there is no resurrection. So we can't preach a crossless Bible. Christianity must embrace the cross. To be a Christian, you must embrace the cross. And in order to embrace the cross, you have to understand what it means. We know that in the early days when the church first started, a lot of the apostles, a lot of the founding fathers, they suffered. They suffered a lot from uh, persecution. They suffered a lot from torments and tortures. So when we talk about suffering, we need to understand what suffering is for. We need to understand the power of suffering. We need to understand what God wants us to go through and what God does not want us to go through. So it's very important that we be biblically sound when it comes to the understanding of Christian suffering. Now we need to understand that the church was founded on the blood of the martyrs. So the martyrs, they suffered. They were tortured, they were persecuted, some of them were crucified, they suffered. The church was founded on the blood of the martyrs. The Bible talks about offering your body as a living sacrifice. So Christianity is not about being self-indulgent, it's not about being self-centered. Christianity is not about getting everything from God for yourself. Christianity is about Jesus whose life has come into you. It's about building his kingdom. It's about building the family of God. There are many churches, but there is only one church. It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one church, but many locations. There is only one church, but many locations. God has given us Jesus in order that we can be his sons and his daughters. God is our heavenly father and he's building a family of sins, a family of born-again Christians for himself, children that he loved so very dearly that he would send his son Jesus Christ in order that we can be with him. So when we understand Christianity, we're not talking about just doing everything for yourself, for your own sake. We're not talking about just enjoying prosperity for yourself, enjoying health and healing for yourself. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a direction to it. Amen? When we talk about suffering, we are not talking about being stoical. We are not talking about that God enjoys us being a stoic. We are now talking about just going through suffering for the sake of suffering. We need to understand that no one, there's not even one person who can be successful without the element, without the power of suffering. If you cannot endure negative times, if you cannot endure tough times, there is no way that you can succeed in life. So when we talk about suffering, we're not talking about pointless suffering. We're not talking about suffering for the sake of suffering. We're not talking about what happened in the Philippines that during Easter, they had somebody crucified on the cross again. No, we're not talking about rituals. We're talking about the power, the force to endure, the force to persevere even in the midst of hard times. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit called long suffering in the Bible. The power to stand strong, to stand victoriously, to stand triumphantly, even when your body is suffering, even when your mind is suffering, even when your emotions are suffering, even when your will is suffering. The power to stand strong in the midst of hard times, in the midst of difficulties. No one can succeed in life without that power, without that force. And that's what Jesus has suffered to give to us. We understand that Jesus suffered on the cross. Why? Because on the cross, he became sin. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So his suffering had a purpose to it. His suffering had a target, a goal to it. Jesus knew where he was going. It's very important that we understand that. 
So when we talk about suffering, we're talking about two kinds. We're talking about the devil being the tormentor who tries to afflict you with suffering. And we're also talking about the power of suffering that God has given to us in order that we can overcome the devil himself. We need to understand that God is not in the, in the purpose, God is not in the purpose of tormenting you. God is not a sadist. He's not in the business of tormenting us. He has no pleasure that he can get from our suffering. We need to understand that, understand that very, very well. God does not delight in your suffering. God does not delight in your sickness and disease. God does not delight in accidents that might come. No. He has no part in the works of the destroyer. He has no part in the, in the works of the tormentor. The devil is the tormentor. The devil is the attacker. He is the accuser. He is the tempter. But God is our savior. Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus is our provision. Jesus is our protection. So we need to be very, very clear. Let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. So always we say yes to God but no to the devil. Always say yes to God and no to the devil. We submit to God, but we resist the devil. We're never passive when it comes to spiritual battles. When we talk about suffering, we're talking about mental suffering. We're talking about emotional, volitional sufferings. We're talking about physical suffering. There are people that suffer tremendously from depression, from mental attacks, People that suffer tremendously from poverty, the fact that they have to believe God every day just to pay their bills. There are people that suffer tremendously from feeling inferior about themselves. They suffer all the time from an inferiority complex, thinking that I'm not good enough, I'll never be good enough, I'm not worthy. There are still Christians that boast about being not worthy. I preached a very good sermon in China about that. I said, you are worthy because God has made you worthy. You better know that you are worthy in order that you can sing with Him, in order that you be of the same frequency that you can receive from Him. So we need to understand. Our understanding of the Bible is very, very important because if we understand wrong, then we believe wrong. And if we believe wrong, then you get what is wrong. So it's very important that we understand the Bible accurately and correctly. Christians, we are not called to be Stoics. We are not called to just suffer with an austere fortitude unto God. No, even Jesus himself did not do that. When he was on the cross, he was not Stoical. No, when he was on the cross, the Bible said that he knew, he saw the joy that was before him. So this is what we're learning tonight. We're trying to understand Jesus and we're trying to follow the way that he did when he was going through tough times. And to do that, we need to be very sure, we need to be 100% sure that God's protection is around us at all times. His protection is around us at all all times, both good times and tough times. Jesus made it very, very clear. He said, in this world, you will have troubles. You will have tribulations. But he did not say, continue to suffer until I come back to you. No, he said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So, attitude overcoming attitude, and he expects us to have an overcoming attitude like he had when he was going through crucifixion and, and death and burial and resurrection. And if those for us, I mean, those of us that have read our Old Testament, that have read our Bible, we understand that the three Hebrew children, they were thrown into the lion's den. But were they burnt? No. Were they burnt? No. How many of you know that Daniel was also 
Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. The Hebrew children were thrown into the fiery furnace. But how many of us know that none of them were burnt? None of them were attacked or killed by lions. Amen. So in those incidences, we know very clearly God's purpose. We know very clearly that our God is mighty to protect, mighty to save. Amen. What happened in the Old Testament is for us so that we can partake of the same faith, so that we can partake of the same protection. Amen? Don't ever forget that God is your protector. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from danger, saved from tough times, saved from the, saved from the attacks of the devil. Amen. How many of us remember Joseph was thrown into jail? How many of you remember? Joseph was thrown into jail. He was the one that had got a prophecy. He was the one that God had ordained and anointed. But he was thrown into jail. Let me ask you, was he defeated when he was in jail? No, not at all. Was he promoted when he was in jail? Absolutely, yes. So God's plan and God's purpose for you is never changed by whatever situation you are in. When you're in difficult times, when you're in hard times, when you're in a difficult place, it does not mean that you have failed God. It does not mean that you have failed Him. It does not mean that you have failed God. The devil tries to convince you that, that it is so, but he's a liar and the father of lies. God never forsakes you. He never forsakes you whether you are in a good place or whether you are in a tough place. He is the one who never, never leaves you, who never forsakes you. Amen? Hallelujah. In fact, we can see the power of Jesus when he was on the cross. There is no resurrection without the crucifixion. Being able to go through tough times with a triumphant and a victorious attitude is the key element for divine success. Can we say amen? Let me give you some scriptures. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Isaiah 43, verse 2. Verse 2. You can always bank on the Word of God. When you're going through a hard times, when you're going through tough times, it's very important that you look to the Word. Your spirit knows that you will triumph, but your soul will react and resent, get frustrated, get angry, quit, even commit suicide. The soul of a man is very, very weak without the empowerment of God. How many of you have ever found yourself weak or even wanting to quit under attacks? Yes. So don't ever condemn yourself. Don't ever feel bad about your weakness. The Bible says, let the weak say what? That I am strong because of what the Lord has done for me. The world does not understand that. The world, in order to escape from weakness, they go to clubs, they go to alcohol, they go to movies, they go to cigarettes, they go, you know, to um, maybe casinos. And that's how they escape from the sufferings of the soul. They don't understand that there is a Savior who cares for them, who loves them. And it's very important that as the church, that we understand this. As far as the world is concerned, when they suffer, for example, from sickness and disease, God is in the business of waking them up so they understand that sin and rebellion will bring suffering. And so when they suffer, they will call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. But the devil tries to turn them away from God and cause them to accuse God and complain against God or blame God like the wife of whom? The wife of Job. Curse God and die. God is never in the business of giving you a hard time. God is never in the business of afflicting you with sickness and disease. 
God is never in the business of making you poor. God is never in the business of breaking your marriage. No, God is good. God is good. So where do all the bad things come from? Come from the sin of man. We're living in a fallen world. Where there is sin, there is sufferings. Where there is sin, there are demonic activities. But Jesus had come and he had provided for a way out. Out of the evil of this world. Out of the torments of the devil. Out of the attacks of the evil one. So when the devil attacks you, don't just sit there and let him attack you. When he attacks you, you rise up. Amen. With your heart, you believe in righteousness. God's righteousness that has been given unto you. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You declare the word of God and tell the devil, there's no way that you can defeat me. There is no way that you can keep me down. I am a winner in Christ Jesus. The power to overcome, I have received that from my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we say that? Amen. Hallelujah. We must not live by our emotions. Your emotions can attack you. Your emotions can belittle you. Your emotions can weaken you. But your spirit is the power of God. Your spirit is the presence of God. Amen. And that's why you are here tonight to feed on the word of God, to strengthen spirit to feed on the word of God to empower your soul so that you don't live like a carnal man you don't live like a worldly man you are a child of God with the power to overcome can we say amen it's very important well even those that play sports how many of you play sports lift up your hands you play sports soccer or rugby let me ask you do you have to be tough when you're playing your sports Yes. Can you win if you're not tough? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you can't win if you're not tough. You get defeated. People will walk over you. You get knocked down. You have to be tough in order to win. You can't be a weakling in a war zone. You can't. This is a war zone, whether you like it or not. This world that we're living in is a war zone. Either you are defeated or you win. And Jesus has already provided us with the way of victory. Can we say amen? It's a matter of your choice. It is a matter of your choice. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you and when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon you let me ask you did this scripture come to pass for the hebrew children yes when they were thrown in the fiery furnace their clothes were not burned there was not even the smell of smoke upon their clothes as Christians, we believe in the reality of the Word of God. As we believe in the reality of the Word of God, miracles happen. Signs and wonders and miracles follow us. Don't believe in the power of suffering. Believe in the power of the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sufferings come, but we don't stay there. We overcome sufferings how? By our perseverance, by our tenacity, by the Word of God, by our faith. That's why the Word of God says that even though I walk through, walk through, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you don't equip your mind with the power of long-suffering, you will fear evil. You will be afraid what the outcome will be. But as you stand strong in faith, as you stand strong in God's faithfulness, even when you're going through tough times, even when it seems nothing is working around you, you know and you know that you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death into the promised land. Can we say amen? The kingdom has already come. The promised land has already been given to us. Amen?
What is the kingdom? In Christ. What is the promised land? In Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to understand that destructive suffering is harmful to the mind. How many of you have had headache after you have suffered mental attacks? How many of you have experienced headache? Yes. When you suffer from mental attack, headaches will come. How many of you have suffered from depression when your emotions are under attack? When you are very sorrowful and you are very grieved and you are very hurt, it's very hurtful for you. All the negative emotions and all the negative thoughts are not good for us. It is not the will of God for us to suffer. It is not the will of God for you to suffer. But you just said, Pastor Dora, that we cannot succeed without the power of suffering. God will empower you and enable you when you go through a time of suffering. We are not called to suffer just by ourselves without the grace and the power and the protection of God. Can I hear amen? We have just read Isaiah 43. When we go through tough times, why well, you ask, Pastor Dory, then why do we have to go through tough times? Can you tell me why? Because we are not in heaven yet. Jesus said, occupy till I come. We are not in heaven yet. Jesus said, in this world, you will have troubles, tribulations, attacks. But he said, overcome. Why? Because I've given you the power to overcome. What do you mean by suffering? Well, I have a goal, I have a purpose, but I haven't achieved it yet. I have desires in my heart, but I haven't got them yet. I want my children to succeed in certain areas, but they haven't come to pass yet. I want my career to be successful in certain area, but I haven't seen it yet. I've done this for somebody, but I come back with misunderstanding. People accusing me and attacking me and blaming me. How many of you have suffered from that kind of, you know, that kind of issues? Yes. How many of you know that sickness and disease is a kind of suffering? Yes, people suffer tremendously from sickness and disease. So we need to understand that it's not the will of God, it's not the plan of God for us to suffer. And that's why he has given us the power. He has given us the power, the enablement, amen, to overcome sufferings, to overcome all the attacks of the devil. It is not the will of God for you to suffer from depression. It's not the will of God for you to suffer from poverty, torments. No. Let me show you the scripture in John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, verse 33 in the Amplified Bible. John 16, verse 33 in the Amplified Bible. Remember, the cross is the place of exchange. The cross is where Jesus suffered for us. The cross is the place of substitution. The, play, the cross is the place where Jesus became the curse for us. The very important word that we should always remember is the word for. Everything that Jesus did was for you and for me. Jesus did not do anything for himself. He did no miracles for himself. He did not go to the cross for himself. He did not get buried for himself. He did not rise for himself. Everything that he did was for us. To put us in a worse place or in a better place? Louder? A better place. So we need to understand that in order that we can receive what he had suffered and died to give to us. Can we say amen? So his sufferings were not in vain as far as the church is concerned. Can we say amen? So if you look at John chapter 16, verse 33 in the Amplified Bible, I've told you these things so that in me you might have what? Perfect peace and confidence. So what do we need when we're going through a tough time? Peace and confidence. 
How many of you have experienced that when you are going through tough times or sufferings, when you were suffering, that it's very easy for you to lose your peace? It was very easy for you to lose your confidence. Right away, you doubt yourself. Have I done something wrong? Have I, you know, offended God? Have I missed something? And then you are everywhere, all over the place. You lose your peace. And, and before you know it, you're crying. You're frustrated. But Jesus said, he said, in me, you may have peace. The devil tried to knock you so that you won't be in him. He tried to get you so obsessed with the problems. He tried to get you so depressed with the problems. But Jesus said, stay where I am. Stay in me. Stay in Christ. Don't ever allow the devil to get you out of your in Christ position. Amen. God has not given you a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and a sound mind. And a sound mind can only be found in Christ. The reason why we preach against sickness and disease is the minute you get sick, your mind is under attack. The minute you get sick, your mind becomes very wearied. Your mind becomes very weak. And before you know it, you don't want to think anymore. You can't think anymore. That's why it's so important that we understand God wants us. His will is for us to have a sound mind. Amen? That we don't allow the devil to attack our mind. Amen? It's very important that we keep that position of a sound mind. Perfect peace and confidence. He said, in the world you have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. Be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, be certain, be undaunted. How many of you know that in a war, the most important thing in an army is what? Morale. As soon as the army loses the morale, they will lose the battle. I admire soldiers and warriors that even when it's very tough, they continue to persevere and they obtain the victory. I remember when Dylan was playing basketball, we used to see him, watch him play basketball. They had to continue, even when they had lost almost, you know, all the points, they continue and continue, and there would come a point when there would be a turnaround, and they would start making it and making it, and in the end, they win the game. That's the same for us. And that's why the power to stand strong, even in the midst of defeat, even in the midst of seeming failure, is very, very important. How many of you have believed God for healing and you have seen someone die or you have seen someone not healed? Come on, lift up your hands. Does it mean that we give up believing God for healing? No. It means that we get stronger. That means that we need to, we need to study even more. That means that we need to deal with our understanding. We need to build up our faith and our confidence that God absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, He's the healer. Amen. The problem is never with God. The problem is with our understanding and with our faith. Amen. And if you continue to read, the Scripture says, For I, this is referring to Jesus, I have overcome the world. I have deprived it. Deprived the world. Who is the God of the world? The devil himself. And Jesus said, I have deprived the devil. I have deprived the devil of the power to harm you and have conquered him for you. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. So when the devil is in front of you, staring you in your eyes with sickness and disease, staring you in your eyes with disappointment and frustration, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Devil, you can't hurt me. You can't afflict me with depression. You can't afflict me with a disappointment. Because it is written that Jesus has deprived you of the power to harm me. He has deprived you and taken from you the power to conquer me. Can we say amen? amen? Why is it so important, you ask me, Pastor Dora, why is it so important that we confess, that we pray? If God is good to me, why doesn't he automatically just do good things for me? Have you ever asked, why do we have to pray? 
What's the purpose of praying? Why? Nothing will happen in your life without you praying. Nothing will happen in your life without you praying. Why? Because God has given you the power to rule over your life. God has given you the power to rule over your life. And not praying, not calling on God, living in a fallen world, means that you're just lying there and allowing the devil to do whatever he wants to you. And that's why you're always into temptation. That's why you're always into lust. That's why you're always into troubles, into frustrations. Because you never release the power of dominion, the power of authority, the power that overcomes the evil one for yourself. How many of you understand what I'm saying? You need, God needs you to release His power for you from heaven to earth. Heaven and earth must be one voice. He needs you to believe in Him. He needs you to release His promises on earth for you. In order that it will come to pass for you. Because nobody is more important in your life than yourself. People can be praying for you, of course. There's the power of intercession. There are intercessors everywhere praying for you. But you are the most effective witness and you are the most effective prayer warrior for yourself. How many of you know what I'm saying? And that power has to be released. It does not come automatically. You ask me, how come it didn't come automatically? Because our God has given every one of us our free will. You win, you choose. You win, you lose, you choose. Whether you win or you choose is up to your choice. You better do something about your life. You better do something about your circumstances. You better do something about your situation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Well, you say, Pastor Dora, I've said that many times and it still has not come to pass. And that's when you need the power of what? Perseverance. The power of strong endurance, even in the face of failure and difficulties. If you will believe, Jesus said, you will see the glory of God. And that's what the resurrection is about. The resurrection is victory staring in the eyes of the devil that even in the midst of death and failure, resurrection comes through. Can we say amen? If you do not quit, you will win. Amen. Amen. And we have seen that in the world. We have seen a lot of people suffering from... Um, Bankruptcy, and they get up again and do it again. Bankruptcy, get up again, do it again. And then in the end, they win. How much more we, the Christians, when we have Jesus, when we have the Holy Spirit, when we have the Word of God? Can we say amen? Amen. Success is not possible without the power of perseverance and endurance. Praise the Lord. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. How many of you want to be like Jesus? How many of you want to be like Jesus? Come on, lift up your hands if you want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. He overcomes all the time. He's never sick, never depressed. <laughs> He's always a winner. He's always welcome. Everywhere he goes, he gathers a crowd. He's full of love, full of joy, full of peace. And that's how we follow him. If you look at um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse, two to, verse 3 to 4. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. The mind is very, very important. That's where the attack is. That's where all the depression is. That's where all the frustration is. That's where all the weakness is. It's fainting in the mind. Come on, lift up your hands with me and say, Thank you, Jesus, that you have given me the mind of Christ. You have anointed my mind with strength with fortitude, with perseverance, with the power 
of dominion. The dominion of Jesus Christ over the devil. The dominion of hope over despair. Success over failure in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's how you resist the devil. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're talking about warfare power. The power of endurance. The power of despising the shame. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's very important. The power of persevering faith. The power of continual confession. Continual prayer. The power of staying strong. The power of seeing the light in the midst of darkness. It's very important that we keep fighting. Keep fighting the devil by faith until the victory comes. Amen. Very important that we understand that. We need to know that the flesh is suffering because your flesh, our flesh always wants comfort. Our flesh. How many of you, loves, how many of you love a good meal? <laughs> Be honest. We love a good meal. Yes. The flesh wants comfort. The flesh never has enough. Come on, feed me. Give me more. Feed me. Give me more. <laughs> okay, how many of you want to voluntarily suffer unto victory? God has given us a way to voluntarily suffer unto victory. You know what that is? Fasting. You can voluntarily subdue your flesh. To come under the will of the Father. Fasting is very powerful and very important when it comes to warfare. Fasting will cause your spirit to rise up and your flesh to go down. The flesh needs to be trained, needs to be subdued. No warriors will go to war without training. Amen? And God has provided a way for us to train ourselves so that our flesh cannot drive us. How many of you have fasted before? Yes. How many of you know that when you fast, your flesh gets very weak? It's like you become so weak. You become so weak. It's like your flesh cannot drive you anymore because your flesh is so weak. Yes? And at the same time, you can be fasting. And then in the past, like a bowl of plain rice will never attract you. <laughs> just bread, white bread will never attract you. But then when you fast, even just a bowl of plain rice, even just plain white bread appears to be so tempting. But that's when you need to be strong. That's when you need to say, I'm doing this to equip myself with the power to overcome the tempter. There has to be a purpose. We're not fasting for the sake of fasting. You're fasting to equip yourself. You're fasting to empower yourself so that your flesh cannot drive you to failure, but your spirit will empower your soul to walk in victory. Can we say amen? Because we know that it's very easy to talk. Everybody can talk. But Christianity is not about talking. Christianity is about walking in power. Amen? So let's lift up our hands. Are you ready to pray with me? Lord, empower me. Enable me to fast, to subdue my flesh, and walk in the power of your spirit, and obtain your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Say with me, I'm not carnal. I'm not worldly. I am a warrior for Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me give you some of the ways that will strengthen you. It's not just talking and talking. It's not just listening to sermon. You need to write them down and practice. Number one, how do we get strong in the spirit? Number one, God will send angels to minister to you. When you are weak, call upon the angels to minister strength to you. An angel came to minister, Jesus, minister to Jesus at Gethsemane. God will send an angel to minister to you when you're at the end of yourself and you have no more strength left. Number two, 
empowerment comes through you committing yourself to God. Always commit yourself to God. Don't be a casual Christian. Power comes through commitment. Power comes through commitment. Miracles come through commitment. A good marriage, a successful marriage comes through commitment. Successful parenting comes through commitment. Amen? And your commitment will be tempted. Your commitment will be trialed. Remember, Peter was shaken. Jesus said to Peter that I will pray for you because the devil is going to deceive you and shake you. But I've prayed for you that you will be strong. So we need strength. We need strength. We need strength to succeed, to commit to God and see his victory manifest in our life. What else will strengthen you when you commit yourself to the will of God? Prayer. Prayer is very important. What did Jesus do before he went to the cross? What did Jesus do before he went to the cross? To strengthen himself, he prayed. The Bible said that he was weak. He went to see his disciples, but they were all sleeping. You'll notice that there will be times that the devil attacks you when you're lonely. A lot of times attacks come not when you're surrounded with people. Not when you're surrounded with people of faith, prayer warriors. A lot of times I've experienced attacks come when you are by yourself, lonely. And you feel that you're the only person on the earth doing the battle. When Jesus was alone by himself at Gethsemane, he went to the disciples. They were all asleep. Nobody could understand what he was going through, the torments that was going through in his mind. And the Bible said he prayed more earnestly. Prayers are very, very important. It is not easy to pray when you're going through tough times. How many of you know what I'm saying? It's easy to pray when everybody is with you. You come to prayer meeting, you know, things are good. You're believing God for good things. The flesh tends to blame God, complain against God, ask God why when you're going through hard times. But your spirit will tell you, your spirit will warn you that you need to war against the devil through earnest prayers. Can we say amen? And I can guarantee you that prayers are not hard. I've seen God come through so quickly. As soon as I pray, God comes through very quickly. The difficult time was when I wasn't praying, when I was struggling by myself, when I was trying to think it through. But as soon as you pray and obey the Holy Spirit, answers come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And finally, to stand faithfully on God's promises. That's how you obtain strength. Let me finish tonight with a very powerful scripture from Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5 in the Amplified Bible. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5 in the Amplified. What are the scriptures for? I know some of you, very seldom do you open your Bible. You may come to church and listen to sermons, and you, you, you know, but you seldom open the Bible. But I want you to know that the Bible is your weapon. The Bible is your treasure chest. Very, very important. What are the Scriptures for? The Scriptures are there for us to possess them. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit behind every Scripture. And I remember I've prayed, and the Holy Spirit said to me, when you continually give yourself to the Word, the Word will come to you spontaneously. When you lay hold of the Word continually, persistently, the Word will lay hold of you. How many of you have had the Word speaking to you, coming to you when you were there? You were not asking God for them, but the Word just come to you. How many of you have had that? Yes. I want you to understand that your diligence will pay off. Your diligence in the Word will pay off. Now, we have medical students here. We have doctors here. I know that you have to study very, very hard. Like we have people here that have gone through studies and you study very hard. But it's because you have studied so very hard, the knowledge has become part of you. 
And when you need it, the knowledge talks to you, speaks to you. And how much more with the Word of God? When you keep sowing into your spirit, when you keep sowing into your mind, when you keep sowing into your feelings, you keep sowing into your self-will, then it becomes progressively, it's not you that live, but Jesus who is living in you because you keep putting the Word in, keep putting the Word in. And so the Word keeps taking up room in this earthly temple. The Word keeps taking up room in your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Your, the Word of God keeps taking up room, keeps taking up room. And to the extent the Apostle Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Jesus who is living in me. Because it's the voice of God talking to him all the time. It's the voice of God directing him all the time. He didn't even have to pause. And that's why Smith Wigglesworth, somebody asked him, how many times do you pray a day? How often do you pray? He said, I prayed without ceasing. I'm praying all the time. I'm praying even when I'm sleeping. I'm praying even when I'm dreaming. Why? Because the Word of God has so filled you up, it starts to overflow. And that's the blessed way to live. The most blessed way to live. Can we say amen? That even out of Paul's pockets, out of his clothes, healing power would come through. Amen. So if we look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, we must not fall into the trap of having just programs and programs and events and events, and we give the Word so little time. It's so easy to spend 24 hours a day without giving any time to the Word. It's very easy. You can be so busy, so busy, and your priorities are so worldly, your priorities are so self-centered, that you, there's no time, no time for the Word. There's no time for guidance. And then when something bad happens, you ask, why, God, why? And God will say to you, it's because you've never listened to me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Let's lift up our hands and say, Lord, I want to listen to you. Empower me to give you time. Let me be disciplined to give you time. Amen. Amen. So let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Moreover, is the Amplified. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings. How many of you think that that's easy to do? <laughs> no, not at all. I, I asked the Lord, how could you do that? You can only do that when the Word overwhelms you. It's like you don't even know that you're suffering. How many of you have had times that you were sick and you pray and you believe God for healing and you just continue with what you're doing and before you know it, you realize that you've been healed? There's a place when God's Word takes over. To begin with, like you're suffering and you're suffering and you're so mad, you're frustro frustrated, you're so disappointed. And then God's grace takes over and takes over and then He takes away your frustration, He takes away your disappointment, He takes away your self-will. And before you know it, you are, not, you are just like, sort of like cruising. And then, oh, I've got the answer already. That's what it means. Let us exult in triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patient and unswerving endurance. How do I do that? It's when I'm going through a hard time, when I'm going through a tough time, my eyes are focused on the will of God. When I'm going through misunderstanding, when I'm going through accusations, when I'm going through slandering, my eyes are focused. The Word of God that says, love never fails. And you continue to love. And you continue to walk in love. Love never fails. You do not allow retaliation to take over. You do not allow resentment to take over. You do not allow self-justification to take over. You abandon yourself completely to the will, the word, the faithfulness of God. It's like He is the one who protects you in the midst of fire. How many of you would say amen to that? How could Daniel make it in the lion's den? 
because his eyes were on God. How could the Hebrew children make it in the fiery furnace? Because their eyes were on God, on the faithfulness of God. I know in whom I believe. Amen. I know that my God will protect my children. I know that my God will heal me. I know that my God will provide for me. You have that power over time. The devil will try to torment you with time. And time will keep saying to you, when, when, when are you going to get this? When are you going to get this? Are you going to get this? I don't think you're going to get this. You have to know that in Christ, there is no time. Time has no power to torment you. That's what faith is about. You live in the realm that is above the devil's accusations and temptations. Amen. That's the place of endurance, unswerving endurance. Can we say amen? And fortitude develops maturity of character, approved faith, and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So when you cry, does it mean that you're weak? No. You're going through that journey. And your tears become less and less. Your frustrations become less and less frequent. You become stronger and stronger. What is that? You are maturing in Christ. What is that? You are being developed in integrity, being developed in fortitude. You are not just a fine weather friend when it comes to Jesus. You are a friend that can go through the storms with Jesus. You are a faithful child, a faithful minister that can, go, that can go through the storms with your God and having done all else, stand and stand therefore. Amen? Don't allow shame to devour you and talk you into disappointment. God, that God does not drop down your failures. God does not take note of your failures. He only takes notes of your success. Do you hear me? He only takes notes of your success. Your failures have been cast into the sea of forgetfulness and He remembers them no more. Can we say amen? Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you praise. You are so faithful. You are so wonderful. Everything that happens in our life is for our good. To promote us, never to demote us. To make us stronger, never to weaken us. Why? Because Jesus, your love never fails in our life. You are always with us. We know that you always take us from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And I just want to ask if anybody here that you have lost your faith in God, maybe just a little bit, or you have lost your trust in God, maybe just a little bit, or you had been disappointed as far as God is concerned, you had been upset with God, I want you to, you don't have to put your hands up for me, but put your hands up to the Lord and ask Him to strengthen you right now. Resist those thoughts and just lift up your hands and ask the Lord to strengthen you right now. To rebuke all those thoughts of attack against your faith. All those thoughts of attack against your commitment. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rebuke those thoughts that attack your commitment to God, that attack your faith in God, rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, the same way, the same way that you strengthen 
All the Old Testament sings when they were going through the fire and going through the flood, going through the storm. We thank you that the same provision that you have provided for every one of us, that purpose is to glorify us. Your purpose is to glorify us, never to condemn us nor to hurt us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.